Hey, it's Heidi. We're about to dig into episode 62. And I was just wondering how everybody's doing. I'll be honest, I really needed this episode this week and to hear from Amy. It's Thanksgiving week when I'm recording this and we just had family pictures, you know, the ones where like it's stylized and your hair and your makeup are done and we've got a professional photographer because we want to have the perfect holiday card that goes out. But the reality is we're in the middle of COVID. A lot of tough things are going on with like life and family and work. And I was really not excited to get these pictures back because honestly, I just don't love the way my body looks right now. I didn't do a great job in the postpartum period taking care of my pelvic floor and I have diastasis recti. So I know when I get these pictures back, the first thing I'm going to think is everyone's going to think I'm pregnant again. So I say all of that because maybe that hits home with some of you guys during this holiday season, but I know that Part of the way in which I'm healing is by following Amy with Homebody Movement on Instagram and connecting with my body, with my pelvic floor, which includes my abdominals, and breathing just positive energy and life into my womb space so that I can move away from this Debbie Downer attitude about professional pictures and really start to get positive about the way I think about my body. I hope you enjoy hearing from Amy. She talks about what it's like to run a business catering to pregnant women while suffering a miscarriage. And she also shares with us all of her passions and expertise about the postpartum body and a really healthy pelvic floor before, during, and after your pregnancy. Stick around to the very end because she also offers an amazing discount code for the Birth Story Podcast listeners, if you'd like to take her online course. So let's dig in. What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does a day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and absorbing all of the information that you need for an amazing pregnancy and birth. My pregnancy guidebook and journal called Birth Story is available at birthstory.com. And as a listener of this podcast, I want you to have $5 off. Like I want you to listen to this podcast and engage with the book. So just use code birthstorypodcast when you get to check out. It is my thank you for supporting me. This pregnancy guidebook and journal is the best gift for you or anyone you know that is expecting. It's a 42 week by week guide to your pregnancy. It has birth affirmations, weekly journaling prompts with a full page for journaling every single week. It has all of the information that you need to connect to your pregnancy and have an empowered birth. So thanks for shopping at birthstory.com. Don't forget to use code birthstorypodcast for your $5 off. It's also available on Amazon, or if you prefer the audiobook, you can download it on your Audible app or at audible.com. Now, let's get to this amazing episode. 
Welcome, Amy, to the Birth Story Podcast. I am so excited to have Amy with Homebody is your company, and then on social, on Instagram, at Homebody Movement. So Amy is coming to us out of Brooklyn, and she is an expert in the postpartum body. And so Amy, welcome, and I want you to share with everyone a little bit about who you are so that we can get to know you as we go on this journey on what we need to know about healing and recovery and tools for our postpartum body. Thank you so much, Heidi. It's great to be here. Um, I love your podcast. I love hearing all the stories. So yeah, my name is Amy Baumgarten from Brooklyn, and I run a company called Homebody. I see both one-on-one clients and I teach prenatal and postpartum classes. Um, But originally, I was born years, years, years ago in Buffalo, New York, so Hala, Western New York, but moved around a ton. I went to college in Baltimore for dance, and then after college, I moved to New York. So I've been a dancer since I can remember, and that's how I got into this field to begin with. So uh, I went from being a bunhead, a ballerina, and all that that entails, which includes a ton of body image issues a ton of injury and, you know, trying to like, I, was, I felt like I was like that, you know, square peg in a round hole, just never quite the ballet dancer type, but it was my passion up until college. Um, and then I started to do more modern dance, contemporary dance, and um, found somatic work. And somatic movement is, you know, it's many things to different people, but somatics means the study of the body. And somatic work is more of an internal process uh, using movement, different kinds of movement to help people, help the practitioner uh, understand their body. So rather than somebody telling me how to move my body, I'm listening within, being, maybe being guided by somebody, a teacher or a mentor, and then listening to those experiences that are coming up for me within and then being able to move my body according to that. So, you know, I I write about this a lot, how I really, in my early days, felt pulled away from between my mind and my body. There was a huge fragmentation. Somatic work really brought those back together. And so I I started doing a lot more rehabilitation movement practices rather than dancing. Um, I still love to dance. I think it's really important for everyone to move their body shake their booties, but I came into the somatic world, into Pilates and yoga and a process of a body of work called body mind centering. And that really just changed everything for me. It's a somatic modality. Um, And I use that a lot in my work. It helps you understand all the layers of the body, not just the bones and the muscles. It really incorporates the organs, it incorporates the fluids, it incorporates your uh, endocrine system, your vocalizing system, right? Your voice and how all these different layers support you. So that came to be my healing process. I was in so much pain and so many injuries in my dance life that I was really drawn to this work for that reason to, to heal so I healed a knee injury, I healed a lower back injury, um, and now I feel like in the best shape I've ever been in, and I'm the oldest I've ever been, of course. How old are you? I just turned 37. 37. That's a 37. spring chicken. Ah, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have lots of questions. I'm going to like jump in. Okay. So you said like you found this like somatic movement in dance. So if anyone's listening and we're going to go into like this healing of our postpartum body, but I'm really interested like in markets, like I'm in North Carolina, what would someone like type into Google or where would we go to like, is there something on YouTube to like, this is something I've never heard of before, but feels really intuitive. I mean, I grew up in Um, Well, I didn't grow up, but I spent my formative years in Asheville, North Carolina, around drum circles. And I would say I was probably doing somatic movement in drum circles because that's when you were talking, that sort of felt like the way I move my body to the beat of like Mickey Hart's planet drum, 
you know, when I'm dancing around. So anyway, just if we're in LA or Minnesota or Houston, whoever's listening, like how, what do we do if we want to explore this type of dance? I would say it's a, it's a growing field. Okay. Um, but it's still quite, it's still underrepresented, I'd say. But there are somatic movement therapists, and that's, those are keywords I would Google. So somatic is really um, a catch-all term that can be applied to so many different practices. You could be somatic in, you know, in the boardroom. You could be somatic when you're driving a car. It's just about, can you stop and take a moment to listen in? Yeah. What comes directly to me is... As a birth doula, I have so many different moms that hire me and a lot are first time moms, but the majority of my clients come to me because they have medical trauma from their first births. So not only are they in this postpartum period, but they are also pregnant again, and they are having to navigate how to take care of their body in the postpartum period while also moving again into the prenatal period. And those tend to overlap. And so if anyone's listening and and you're resonating with what I'm saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm pregnant again. I'm listening to this episode because I want some information on postpartum. But like, I would definitely recommend hearing what Amy's saying and typing in somatic psychotherapy to start doing some like maybe like intuitive visualization, tapping into center before you move on to your next birthing experience. So really interesting stuff. Okay, so in Brooklyn, like with Homebody, do you work only in Brooklyn or do you have like clients all over the world that you work with virtually? Like talk to me a little bit about like what everyday life for you looks like. Sure. My practice is based in Brooklyn before the pandemic. I was seeing clients live at my studio here. And I was seeing virtual clients, but the vast majority were my live classes, my live clients. Since the pandemic, I have taken my one-on-one clients um, onto Zoom and it's been surprisingly effective. It's, and it's really, I've been able to reach people all over the world now. And I'm, I'm starting to actually move into the virtual realm more. I'm really uh, embracing it. Whereas before I was like, no, <laughs> I, was a, I was a purist. It's like, we must touch. We must be in, in the room together. And I still value that very much. But I think this work does transcend space and time. Yeah. So there's something really powerful about that. There is. It has been amazing to me because right now I'm a virtual doula. And everything is unfolding with all of my clients as if I was physically present with them, even though I'm not able to put my hands on their body. It's just amazing what we can do with tone and voice, how you can still show up and be an empath. And like that comes through the screen. I mean, it really has been pretty I just was like you, I was like, oh, this is just, I'm going to have to file for unemployment. I can't be a doula. This is never going to work. And I feel like right now I could literally be a virtual doula for anyone around the world and effectively serve them. And so I think our business models are going to really be changing after coronavirus. I know that you have some new things that you've added in I want to get to and talk about. So let's kind of dive right in. What are the most common things that people are coming to you for with their postpartum body? And then I will also like to chime in. Some of my clients have written into me and had some questions and things for you. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's always helpful to hear um, what other people are experiencing. So I came to the postpartum work before pregnancy, before other stuff, um, just because it was such a huge uh, thing. People were coming to me with these issues. And I said, wow, you know, this is a community I can serve. Let's, let's get into this. And so I did a lot more studying over the years. The biggest things that I've found over the years, one of the biggest fears is diastasis recti. And I'm an expert on working on that specifically. 
I will say I think it became this big phenomenon and it's not as much of an issue as, as we've been led to believe. But it is, it is common and it is something that people have fear around, especially second time moms, second time pregnancies, people who are going through the postpartum period and now pregnant. They want to make sure that they can keep that in check. Incontinence is a big one and other pelvic floor issues. So a lot of pelvic floor issues like incontinence, like hemorrhoids, like constipation, all those things that arise from pelvic floor issues can be managed really well by the pelvic floor protocol that I have. And, you know, I highly recommend going to see a pelvic floor therapist when the world goes back to normal and we can see therapists and be one-on-one in a room with people. It's a great way to reconnect to your pelvic floor and get support. But I, in my role is to empower you, the mover, the body holder, to understand what you can do, right? To help you feel it. And the somatic process is about, you know, the pelvic floor and the deep core, which is where I I put my focus in the postpartum work, is uh, not something that we know about. It's not something that we talk about. It's not something we feel readily. And so somatic work that I do helps you sense that, touch that with your mind and be able to go, oh, okay, that's my pelvic floor, right? Yeah, I can look at the bones. I can look at maps and illustrations, but here's what it feels like. And here are the tools that I can use in order to keep feeling it and keep engaging it. Yeah. So pelvic floor is a big one. Um, but I, I want to say too, compressed vertebrae, it's not something I all uh, that you generally associate with it, but whether it's a, a tight neck, usually upper back in general gets very compressed while at the same time, there's a lot of rib flaring. And so with that combination, there's a lot of breathing issues. All of this makes so much sense to me. And Amy, I am four years postpartum. And I'm like, if I'm being really honest, I mean, I'm still kind of suffering through a lot of these things. I think it's important to recognize that the postpartum period doesn't have a time limit, that it can be from the moment you give birth. But these are different things that if they are not addressed can be issues that could last a lifetime. So I would say I I don't think it's ever too late to find our way to your class. And I want to talk about your online course because it is mind-blowingly impressive, affordable. It is mandatory for all of my doula clients to take it. And I was hoping that you might share like with your background and your history, like in dance and in prenatal and then the somatic work and the evolution of Amy. Like there has been this, the 37 years of your life have had this amazing, especially with body image, because part of postpartum body is embracing our, and the things I was going to add were the fatty tissue and the extra weight and we the pockets of fat where we gain in different places with the increase in estrogen and especially with those in dance and have um, history of, I have a lot of clients with a history of um, disordered eating or eating disorders, if that makes sense in both of those mm-hmm. ways. And, and embracing the loose skin or maybe the scar tissues and like kind of having love for that is something that is very difficult for anyone to anticipate. And then you wake up one day and then and hear it. So I wanted to kind of talk a, a little bit about that. But Amy, your evolution led you to developing an online class, assumably, so that you could scale the work that you're doing outside of Brooklyn, and really impact the lives of thousands to millions. Can you share with us, like, I, I want to know up front, like, tell us the name of your course, how we access it. We're going to put a code up for a discount on the podcast. But then I want you to walk through what you have designed and created for people like my listeners. Absolutely. I'm so happy to. 
So I made this course. Uh, it's called Returning to Center. And you can find it on my website, homebodymovement.com. Um, it's not hard to find from there. I made this course because this is the population that I saw needed the most help first. I have every intention of creating a pregnancy course to go along with this one and a preconception course later on down the road. But in my mind, people who are dealing with these issues now needed this work. And I wanted to create something that gave the basics of what the deep core was, what it is, and how to work with it, the things that I do with my clients every single day. So the deep core is really the most profoundly affected when it comes to getting pregnant and uh, going through childbirth uh, and the postpartum experience too. Everything is affected from there outward. So what the deep core is, is the muscles of the breath, the muscles of the deep spine, the pelvic floor muscles, and the muscles around, um, around the front of the spine, which are the deepest abdominal layer, which we call the transverse. So those four muscles are kind of like a room a ceiling, a floor, and the walls around your spine. And they create your stability. They, they create your sense of uh, groundedness. Mobility is involved with that. And any strength that you have in your body comes from that place. So if it's disoriented, and of course it's disoriented after giving birth and after being pregnant for nine or 10 months, then what happens is we create new patterns based on this disoriented deep core. And if we don't reclaim the deep core, reconnect to it, then we hold onto these inhibitive patterns that eventually are going to cause injury. And like you said, four years, 10 years, 30 years down the road, postpartum, those issues could still be present. Yep. I'm going to jump in right there too, because as you're talking, it's really it's triggering some things for me, when, especially when you mention something like a house and a ceiling and walls. I'm going to get teary here. The way that I experienced this was a profound emptiness. So I know there will be people listening to this podcast that had something, someone inside there that is not a baby in their arms. They went home or they they miscarried at home. They had a stillborn or they birthed their baby. And when that house feels empty, as you're talking to me, I don't know this, I'm not an expert, but the way I am interpreting it and getting teary eyed is because I still suffer from postpartum anxiety and depression. And I believe and I filled up my core with food and all these unhealthy things, right? And so like you're describing this sacred womb space that for me, when my baby was expelled and I wanted more children and I couldn't have more children, and I'm so thankful that I have two children, but I have never felt like my family was complete. And so my womb space feels empty. And so you talking feels there's something triggering. And I'm saying this out loud because if that's happening for me, then I feel like it's got to be happening for other people. And so can we talk a little bit more about what the healing process looks like from the center? Like I love the name of your course, Returning to Center. But I was hoping that you may kind of walk me through like if I was coming to you postpartum and doing this course, what is your ultimate goal? Like what do you feel like you're walking me through on my postpartum journey? And where do you hope, like me or anyone listening that takes this course, like where do you hope that we arrive at the end of your course, like where your heart was when you were building it? Mm, Such beautiful questions. And thank you for sharing your experience. And um, I know that emptiness. I had a miscarriage in uh, November. And I did this work. I, I was a student of this course during that time because I felt so disconnected from my body, so disappointed in my body. And as much as I talk to my students and I share and encourage them, I needed to like hear it myself. 
I couldn't be the encourager anymore. So that's what this course does for anybody wanting to reconnect. And I will say that everyone has a deep core. Anyone with a pelvis has a deep core. And those who are womb carriers have the opportunity to really claim this space and to know all of its different capabilities, right? We can birth, it can expand, and it it can it can do all these incredible things and it can recover from that life-changing experience. So what this course, in my heart, what I intended this course to show everybody is that our bodies have the capacity, unending capacity to shift, shape shift, and all of it can be celebrated. All of it should be celebrated. So we take it in four parts. So the, the, the first section is just an introduction, understanding what the deep core is, why we're even talking about it, how it's been affected. So you really get a, a good anatomy lesson and you get to um, assess yours. So we do a little diastasis test and strength test. So you get to check in with yourself before and create some intentions around why you're there personally. And then there's four movement sections. The first one is talking about the deep core. There's four, as I mentioned, there's the four layers of the deep core. And we get really comfortable with each of them through different exercises. Um, there's So there's videos for each. Your course. videos are <laughs> amazing too. Anyone who's listening as Amy's talking, I mean, like this is not like a course that's a PowerPoint presentation. I mean, this right. is top quality, top of the line, one of the most interactive, most beautifully done courses I've ever seen. So like, I just don't want to gloss over like how amazing Thanks. your videos you. are. <laughs> The um, my, the perfectionist uh, type A in me was like, these have to be beautiful as well as sound good and feel good. Yeah, um, and they are. Everything, right? Every part of it, it matters. Um, so the first section is really getting into the deep core, which is slow, which is subtle, which is somatic. Um, and there's questions that are asked, reflection questions that help you understand or help you suss out what you're experiencing. Like, what does it feel like to breathe this way? What does it feel like to touch base with your pelvic floor today? Um, so you get a chance to really check in with yourself. And then this, this, the second section is focusing on the lower body. So we really get connected to our legs and our hips from the deep core. So this, again, is always coming back to how the deep core affects and is affected by your movement. So we go into lower body action. We get a little more movement involved. The third section is the upper body. We look at how we connect and root to the ground through our legs first, and then how we can expand upward and out into the world. This fourth section of the movement sequence is integrating all of that. So we do three advanced exercises that are repeatable. And that can, uh, I've heard from students that really help start to alleviate some of those postpartum issues that we were mentioning earlier, um, whether it's back pain, whether it's really wanting to connect to your core. So there's a more high intensity core work. And then we have the final uh, closing section with another assessment that you can take and um, final thoughts and reflections that you can do. Then there's just material that you can download and take with you audio classes that I've put together that you can just listen to and follow along with um, and things like that. So lots of resources around the actual material. Amy, what is the website where someone finds the course? If you go to my website, homebodymovement.com, it's on the the front page of okay. that. Okay. We will link to that in the show notes, but homebodymovement.com to be able to access the the course. And then Amy, I know you had a discount code for those listening. So can Absolutely. you tell us what the price is and then also what the discount code would be? Hey, it's Heidi. I'm interrupting the podcast to let you know about a free resource that I've created for you at birthstory.com. All you have to do is go to birthstory.com and then click the tab that says the workbook. Once you put your email address in, an entire resource library of all of my secret sauces are available to you for free as my thank you for listening to the Birth Story podcast and being part of this community. 
at birthstory.com under the workbook, you will find a birth plan template, articles on circumcision, delayed cord clamping, flipping a breech baby, packing your hospital bag, acupressure points, placenta encapsulation, and so much more. There are over 20 free articles ready for you to download at birthstory.com. Now let's get back to this amazing episode. Okay, I know I left you hanging on that discount code, but now back with Amy. It's two forty nine for the course, and that includes a year year long access to all the videos. And then the there's a lot of stuff to download that you can keep forever. Um, And most people are finishing the course in less than six months. But I wanted to give everybody like a lot of time to be able to go back and to repeat anything that they needed to really bring it into their body. But this is not something that I feel anyone needs. You know, this is this is foundations work, right? Ideally, you're going to take this, it's going to integrate into you and to your movement. And then you're able to go do the wonderful things that you love to do yoga, Pilates, running, biking, tennis, swimming. Those are activities I don't recommend in the early stages of postpartum. I recommend this work first. And then, yeah, moving into your life. So you have a year-long access. The discount, 10% off with Birth Story 10. All caps, Birth Story 10. Awesome. Thank you for doing that for my listeners, so too. Happy. So happy to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have some things I want to really dig into for postpartum and like just kind of hit it. So like... Number one, like I said, as a doula and anyone who's coming to my podcast for education through storytelling, we do so much planning and preparing for the birth process, which is very important. But there are a couple things we I see consistently with my clients and they don't put any effort into the postpartum period or the nursing period. And then they're very surprised. So we want to set everyone up for success. Okay, by giving you some practical tools. So we're going to give away some things for free in this podcast of how to take care of yourself. And then literally, we're just going to encourage everyone to as you're you're listening to this podcast because you're preparing for your birthing time. I mean, like scribble down home body movement. And I want you to add this and the discount code birth story 10 to enroll in this course. So some of the things, though, that we we have to put on the table for the postpartum period that people need to be ready for and aware of. And again, like I said, this is if you have miscarried, this is if you have recently had a child living or not. This is if you are trying to get pregnant and you are trying to work also on, you know, connecting with that womb space to create a positive environment you know, for a baby to to live and thrive. So a couple of things that came up from my clients, right? Like that are like, okay, we just gave birth and da, 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 da. So the first one is the after cramps that no one talks about. So immediately after having a miscarriage or giving birth, there are a lot of after cramps. And so I was wondering if you could share some like, or verbalize in the best way possible, some breath or some movements that can help soothe the after cramps that hit, especially when you're nursing and your uterus is contracting. So keeping that in mind that there might be a baby on the breast, I was hoping that we could maybe have you walk us through some breath or some movements. What would your advice be for um, my clients and my listeners? Well, I was wondering if I could answer that by taking us all through a little breath practice, just like a couple minutes. Um, okay? Absolutely. I'm needing right. some, I'm needing some relaxation today. So let's do it. All right. Okay. So this is great. This is a little taste of how I work um, using somatic visualization. So if you're experiencing, and this can also include menstrual cramps. So um, if you're experiencing cramping of the uterus, what I'd like you to do is find a comfortable position. And that could be seated, that could be reclined. One option is lying on your back with blankets under your knees, under your head. So wherever you are, just take a moment to drop in. You can close your eyes or keep them open and soft. 
And as you take a breath in, notice how your body expands. As you let your breath go, feel your body emptying. Just notice the ground below you rising up to meet you. Can you think a little deeper into your seat or the floor? And you're gonna place your hands or one hand on your womb. And now we're gonna see if we can direct our breath into our hands. So the same thing as you breathe in, feel the womb filling up, expanding in all directions. And as you exhale, feel how it draws together very slightly. You don't have to squeeze it. You don't have to muscle through anything. Just noticing the change. And now we're gonna change just a little bit of this breath pattern. You're gonna inhale the same way, filling up the womb, feeling it expand three-dimensionally. But as you exhale this time, see if you can continue to softly expand the womb. So instead of emptying and condensing, the womb is gonna still be filled, expanded, as you slowly let the air out of your body. Each time you do this, notice if you can feel the muscles around the womb. The womb is a muscle and there's muscles around. Feel them soften and open and relax. Take one more breath in, let it go nice and slow. And slowly start to open your eyes if they're closed and come back to the room. Well, that felt wonderful. <laughs> You have a different tone of voice now, Heidi. I love I know. it. I'm like, I'm going to have to wake back up into podcasting <laughs> voice. I wanted to share the way I experienced that. I really appreciate that, that exercise. I never lost one pound of my postpartum weight. So I currently weigh four years later the same that I weighed on the day that I came home from the hospital. So the first thing I notice when you ask me to touch my womb and my womb space is I had a mental and a lot of moms that may be doing this postpartum right after you have a baby that there's just a lot of extra skin and things mm -hmm. there. I had to mentally take a moment and choose in that moment to not judge myself. And to, to feel through the flap of extra fat deposits that I have allowed my body to hang on to because of postpartum emotions. And so instead of feeling the fat on my belly, I was, I was able to achieve feeling through it all the way to the energy of my womb space. So I just wanted to put that out there for those that may be plus sized or just recently postpartum. And if you have that same moment, just keep breathing through it because I just kept listening to your words and I was able to get there. And then once wow. I was able to get there, I was able to really connect with my womb and I've never, in just those short few minutes, 
And I've never done that. I have never had a moment with my womb space, you know, to even like ask her what she's been through, what that experience was like for her through fertility and through two children and then through not being able to have another baby. I feel like I just got one small tool from you that's going to let me start a journey. That one tool that you just gave just gives a little path of how to get closer to there. So that's pretty that's awesome. So beautiful. That's beautiful. And and I am uh, want to acknowledge you and anyone out there who is dealing with that. I know I was dealing with that after my miscarriage of like just hands on belly was triggering but when you can go, you know what, today or this minute, it's something else. I choose to focus on something else. It can feel really liberating and help you really see all the layers of who you are, not just this, this one place. Yeah, I absolutely get it. Okay. And I want to just say one okay. thing about that exercise so people understand what we did, which is the breath is there to help. The cramping is obviously contracting. The, the uterus is a muscle. It's contracting over and over again. So it's almost like a Charlie horse in your calf, right? And it's like, it's uncontrollable. It's necessary, right? When we're giving birth and sometimes the afterbirth. Um, but when it's continuing, sometimes it's kind of like that Charlie horse where it just didn't know to, to, to shut off yet. It's going to need some time. So what your breath is doing is going into inside that contracted space, right? Your mind and your breath. And you're just kind of like pressing out against the walls of the uterus and saying, hey, wait, it's okay. We're just going to make space so that it feels like it doesn't have to continue to squeeze in and tighten it around itself, right? We're just creating a little softness within. Yeah. So that's what we were doing. What it reminds me of when my clients are in labor and their and their whole body head to toe initial reaction is to curl up into a cramp and then a ball. Right. And then through having... A doula, like my role is to help release and surrender through breath from head to toe. And so this is that same concept and philosophy, but, you know, isolated directly to our womb space. So really cool. Yeah. Okay. The next question was sex and the pelvic floor. So all we're told, the only information that we are given is Don't have sex for six weeks. You may have had no tearing. You may have had a sulcus tear. You may have had a a third or fourth degree tear. We're all given the exact same information regardless of having a belly birth, having a vaginal birth, having injury to our rectum, our vagina, our labias, our clitoris. People don't know that you can have tears around your clitoris and your labias and all these things. And so we just go to the doctor and then they tell us like, presumably our body should heal itself, magic, in six weeks. And this is a misconception that must die and why it's important to take Amy's class. And so I wanted you to talk about healthy sex in the postpartum period, how to listen to your body and how to know, like, are we dry? Are we lubricated? What these things are, if it's painful, how do we take breath? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, if you haven't Mm -hmm. had sex for six weeks and you just birthed a baby, you're scared. You're scared to take a shit. And if you're scared to take a shit... (laughs) You are really scared if you are in a heterosexual relationship to have a penis inside of you. If you are in any other type of like, you know, relationship, you're anything inside of you or around you or rubbing on you can be very intimidating. So I was just that's my next question is sex, sex, sex. What is your advice for the postpartum mom? Yeah, this is amazing question. Recommend to everyone, anyone who has given birth of any kind to see a pelvic floor therapist, at least one, because the work that they do is powerful. The manual work they do, it's female body centered, right? So they're looking at what's happening for you, not the protocol of six weeks or whatever. 
I highly recommend that because they do, they will help you out, especially if you're having specific issues having sex. In, from my perspective and from the work I do, I want to honor people's process and say, if it's something that doesn't feel right, two months later, four months later, eight months later, then honor that. And do the, there's work that we can do for the pelvic floor to touch base. And that is not everything. So what I mean by work, I mean, sometimes just touching your pelvic floor again can be a powerful step. In my course, I have work um, using a massage ball on the pelvic floor. That can be life altering because you realize different things when you touch and when you engage with these parts of your body. And then there's more uh, musculature work we can do. If that feels good and is able to help you awaken the pelvic floor, then have sex, that's great. And if it's still not helpful, um, then there's, there's gonna be probably more work that needs to be done, especially if there was high trauma during birth, if there was uh, really big tears, third and fourth degree tears, you might need a little more manual support. And that's what a pelvic floor therapist would do. I think the six week, go ahead and have sex after six weeks is ludicrous and does not acknowledge the woman at all. <laughs> it's like a left, it's from like a leftover right. time when it was really about the husband and when he can get back to right. doing his business. Really. I'm like, how about you spend weeks zero through six exploring your own body and every day feel in touch and how it changes and how the swelling changes and and get in tune with your body. And that's different for everyone. But like we don't do enough in that postpartum visit at the hospital with your OBGYN. Mm-hmm. I mean, midwives do a little bit more, but like talking really about what it's like for you and what you want and your enjoyment and your healing and how your body is changing and all of that kind of stuff. So I at least wanted to put that out on the table. I do also always recommend, even if my clients have a tiny tear and they choose to use like Manuka honey to like heal naturally, that they still see a pelvic floor therapist because but there's so much more mm-hmm. that happens to our pelvic floor than tearing. And all we yeah. talk about is tearing. Like, oh, I don't yeah. want to tear. And, you know, but I'm like, well, what about like the strength of your vaginal walls, which is leading to my next question that you brought up so that we don't have a cystocele or um, mm-hmm. what would be, that's a prolapse of your bladder. So like our vaginal walls stay strong. And so a lot of your work that you had talked about was working and leading up to the birth, but then in that postpartum period to make sure that pelvic floor was strong. So I think that would be the the last thing I wanted you to touch on today was about incontinence and the actual like strength of the pelvic floor and some of the um, things that you would recommend to do while everyone's listening right now, pregnant, and then immediately, immediately, not like six weeks later, but like immediately, you have to urinate, like, like within probably 30 minutes of giving birth. And so what that's, that looks like um, with, within your practice and within the returning to center course. Uh, so the, um, I encourage all of my students and clients that right after giving birth, squeeze your vagina. You won't feel it. If you get, if you, if you gave, um, if you had vaginal birth, you won't necessarily feel it, but squeeze a few times and then let it go. And then a few hours later, do that again and do it every day. Because what you're doing is you're reconnecting the neuromuscular pathways that connect your brain, your, your volitional willpower, uh, desire for something to happen and the actual reality of it happening, right? So the more that you can do right after birth, and that it doesn't hurt, it's not going to hurt um, pre six weeks to do this. It's actually very powerful. Squeeze, 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 then let it go. Just a little here and there. While you're pregnant, same the same work that we do in returning to center for the pelvic floor, um, it looks the same. In, during pregnancy, it's just about getting the full range of motion of this 
diamond. I like to call it the pelvic diamond that we have. And that's the space between your sitting bones and between the pubic bone and your tailbone, right? So it makes a diamond shape at the bottom of the pelvis where those muscles intersect and where they hold space for the vagina and the anus and the urethra. Baby's pushing on the bladder, which means baby's pushing and weighted on the urethra. And uh, I have some issues, <laughs> TMI, I have some issues with peeing just without having had a baby yet. That uh, it, if my bladder gets too full, it just doesn't, it doesn't come out. It's Cause it's like, if you think about like a, a water balloon and you poke it with just a tiny little needle and you see just that little thread of water coming out, right? It takes a while because it's such a full balloon right? It's, it's, there's pressure on the opening, right? That is very similar when you give birth. There's all this pressure pushing on this little tiny urethral opening of your bladder. And then it can uh, actually create issues where either it's hard to pee or you, or you don't have control peeing, right? So what we want to do is draw up right? And you can do this from the center of your pelvic floor, which we often talk about in this course, but you can do it from the vagina. You can do it from the anus, or you can do it from the urethra. And so doing this during pregnancy, because during pregnancy, your pelvic floor is still pretty much intact. There's a lot of weight on it, but it's intact postpartum right away. You're not going to have that nuance, that ability. But so if you do it before, and so this is what I want to say is do this work before giving birth and it will help you with the recovery postpartum. I have a great question for you on that then. Yeah. When yeah. do you feel it is the best to purchase the returning to center course? Because I'm starting to hear that you should, you should be purchasing this course while you're still pregnant and kind of like reviewing it. So you have an idea so that it's not this overwhelming thing postpartum. It's actually something that you're looking forward to in your postpartum as part of your birth preparation planning. This is my takeaway, but I wanted to hear from you on like when you feel is the ideal time for someone to register for returning to center. I think that's a fabulous idea. If you have the capacity during your pregnancy, maybe in the nesting phase, third trimester, if you really have space to relax and just take in some new information um, or even earlier than that, if you have that option, yes, by all means. And like I said, I want to do a pregnancy course that specifically talks to pregnancy um, because things will feel a little bit different, of course, than when you are postpartum. But to but to get a sense of it, I think that's a great idea, Heidi, to be able to uh, kind of wrap your head around some of the concepts beforehand. You could practice the exercises while pregnant. They're, it's all safe for pregnancy and postpartum. So it could be a really great way to, to kind of prepare. Yeah, I was just kind of thinking about my own postpartum journeys and how they were just so overwhelming if someone was like, if I wasn't prepared that it was part of my plan, you know, I would want it to be beforehand, like just as much as you're writing out a birth plan, and you're writing out a nursing plan, you should also be writing out a postpartum plan. And hopefully it, you know, includes the returning to center course as it does for all of my doula clients. So a lot of my listeners will write in and say like, Heidi, we really feel like you're our virtual doula. And so I'm telling you, if you take that seriously, and you are listening to episode after episode, and you are learning from me, then I really want you to take this seriously and take the returning to center course at homebodymovement.com and use the code birthstory10 to get your 10% off of the course. It is important to me. It is important to Amy. And then that's why we've come together today to collaborate on this episode so that you are preparing for the birth that you want, but also learning how to recover and heal your body. And in full disclosure, because I don't want you to end up like me. I didn't take it seriously. I had bladder surgery. My vagina is put together with mesh. 
I have a sling under my urethra. My bladder is tacked. I gained 70 pounds that I held onto. I have diastasis recti. It is painful to have sex. And all of this is why I have been like stalking Amy on Instagram and asking her like, is it too late for me? And the answer is no, it's not too late for me. Like I can heal my body and my womb space through like the somatic breathing and practice. And I'm really excited to be going on this journey with you, Amy. And I really hope that the listeners are inspired to do the same. Thank you, Heidi. And I just want to quickly air fist bump you uh, for that pre that prep for postpartum. Have a postpartum plan. That is so huge. Um, I say that to everyone that I work with who is uh, preparing a baby. It is not just about the birth plan. It is about how you recover and how you are going to recover later is what um, is affected by what you're doing today. So just keeping that in mind, I would love to leave everyone with the notion that you, after giving birth, in whatever circumstances that you've given birth, have a new form to explore. That it's not about getting your body back. You're still you and you still have the same body, but it's it's a different landscape and it can be explored and celebrated as such. And that's what I'm hoping to impart in returning to center. I think it's coming through loud and clear. Thank you for being on my show today and um, for being part of my life, Amy. I really appreciate you. Oh, same here. I'm so grateful for you, Heidi, and for all the inspiration you're providing all these amazing women. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Birth Story. My goal is you will walk away from each episode with a clear picture of how labor and delivery might go and that you will feel empowered by the end of your pregnancy to speak up plan and prepare for the birth